Am I the asshole for not letting my daughter cut her hair for her stepsister who has cancer? My 32 female daughter Mia, 12 female, has a stepsister named Jenny, 15 female, who has cancer. I don't know too much about it, but I know her hair is falling out. Recently, Jenny's mom Lauren, 38 female, texted me to say that Mia's hair appointment is on Wednesday. I asked her what she meant, and she said that Mia was going to shave her head to show that she supports Jenny. I told her that Mia wasn't going to shave her head, and if Jenny needs support in that way, then Lauren can do it for her. Lauren said that I was being selfish and not thinking about how cancer is affecting Jenny. I told her my daughter has nothing to do with Jenny's cancer and that they aren't even close and there's other ways of showing support. Mia wasn't even aware of the fact that she was getting her hair shaved off or the fact the appointment was even made. I asked Mia if it would be something she's open to, but it isn't. Mia's dad, Liam, thinks that this can be a bonding experience for both the girls and I wouldn't want to get in the way of that. I told him that they didn't even talk about it with me and Mia. I don't think that I was wrong in what I did, but my stepmom and dad think that I'm not thinking about how Jenny feels. My cousin and I are fully naked making out on my bed. And here is where I failed. I thought I locked my bedroom door, but I didn't. We go from making out to doing more stuff, and then more and more stuff. He's on top of me at this point, so I can't really see my door. My cousin and I are going at it. Then all I hear is my door creaking open. We stop and look over his shoulder. That's when we see our grandmother. But here's the thing. She couldn't actually open the door all the way. My hamper was right behind the door. My bed is behind the door. So at this point, he gets off of me, and we're both trying to get dressed as quickly as possible and my grandma just says are you coming down to the party or not then she fully opens the door i'm halfway dressed and he is less than halfway dressed she actually started laughing and says oh i knew you guys were up to something then she said don't worry i won't tell anyone my cousin and i looked at each other and didn't say a word that's when she says you two better come downstairs before someone else comes up i actually could not believe it we end up going downstairs and have a great time with our families later that night my grandma pulls me aside and says life is short so you should have fun but try to not have too much fun with your cousin but yeah this didn't stop us after the party i ended up going to his house and we finished the job there am i really disgusting for this we've been doing it every day last friday i 34 female spent my evening with my friend kate who's 24 from work as she wanted to discuss something personal with me i didn't think anything of it as we do have a very personal relationship outside of work as well as soon as i arrived to her place the tension in the air was thick she explained that she wanted to discuss a serious matter with me, but that she didn't know how to go about it. I told her to just rip the bayonet off and tell me. She told me that she had found two recordings of a woman that she believed to be me on a pornographic website. I told her that wouldn't be possible, but she was adamant that I was the woman in the recording. And she was right. I've never recorded myself naked or having sex with my husband, but there I was in two recordings of seven minutes and four minutes, both of them recorded in our old bedroom. As I rewatched every second of it, it starts to dawn on me that this was my husband's doing. But I pushed that deep down because there must be a reasonable explanation for this. Honestly, I left her a place with my mind in complete meltdown. I could barely hear what she was saying, but she did follow up with the text saying that she's been in contact with the website about getting it taken down and that she'll help me go through with this. She also said that she's scouring the internet in case there are more out there. I came home and pretty much ransacked my house looking for evidence and I found it. My husband was using hidden spy cameras to spy on me and record me in my most intimate moments. I then just spent hours vomiting, crying, projectile vomiting some more, and then begging God just to let this be a nightmare. I am deeply religious and a full-veiled Muslim woman and I've never been with anyone but my husband and all this time he's been sharing my most intimate moments with the world. All I do is look up how other people have dealt with getting these things removed and it seems like once it's on the internet, it really is there forever even if I remove it from this one website. I've been crying non-stop. He truly must be something demonic as he's right now talking about ordering in some of my favorites to see if I have an appetite since I haven't been eating well. I left him as I said I would. He went to work. The movers arrived, we packed my stuff and we left. The entire time I was crying to the point that even the movers were worried about me, but I couldn't stop myself from crying. I went home, sat my parents and siblings down, and explained the situation. My parents were and still are confused. They are elderly and fragile. They don't understand the internet. They just kept saying, okay, let's talk to the people and it will be gone. But my siblings understand. They are angry. They are sad and heartbroken on my behalf. My siblings and brother-in-law took me home. We waited for him and we all had a conversation with him. He denied it at first, so my brothers were firm with him and he started being more truthful. He said he did it because he was depressed, because he had a poor addiction, sex addiction, and because he didn't think anyone would see it. He said he only posted a few. When we asked him to be specific, he said that he posted anything from five to eight. We had him take it down, but who knows how many times it has been downloaded or shared. In that moment, I also found out that he had a secret phone. He was also cheating on me with random women and sex workers. All this time, I was thinking he's working hard, but nope. He was out disgracing himself and betraying our marriage. At some point, he convinced us that he needed to use a bathroom and he somehow managed to call his mother, who arrived at our home with his brothers and cousins. There was a commotion as they were angry at the treatment of their family member. Then things calmed down enough to explain to them what he had done. His mother fainted. His mother is elderly and not in the greatest health condition. We called for an ambulance. My neighbor also called the police and I was arrested by the time the ambulance arrived to take care of my mother-in-law. 
Part two, my husband posted my body online. I spent the evening locked up. Didn't exactly have polite conversation with him. So yes, I was arrested for assaulting him specifically slapping him and he refused to press charges got released the next morning and went home to my parents cried some more because my parents kept crying then a few days later i spoke to some lawyers my sister contacted as they had experience with non-consensual material being posted online they've been handling things with police as i did press charges and they're dealing with the websites i also have started the process of divorce i went and got tested and luckily he didn't give me anything so far but i have another test scheduled just to make sure i haven't spoken to his mother and she apologized to me even though it's not her fault she told me that she understood why I wanted him punished. She asked that I let it stay in the hands of the law rather than I hurt him or have him hurt. He's in hiding, but he still calls and texts me from random numbers. He still lies and tries to manipulate me. I've just been documenting everything he says and texting me. Oh, and at this point, everyone knows. I mean everyone, even little kids. This man has destroyed everything that I worked for and has completely destroyed my very little sense of stability and safety I had left. I had to resign from my job, a job that I loved. Jobs don't come easy with me for the way that I look. I can't work there anymore because I'm a potential danger to children and staff. Since, perverted men have started to harass me at work. I work with vulnerable children and mothers who have heard about me have started to refuse me working with their children. Some don't want me to be involved with their child because their husbands can't stop being weird. Fathers have leered at me or made lewd comments toward me and one of them even offered me money to sleep with him. A man followed me from my dentist's office and groped me on the street. Random men call my phone, my family home, and my office to verbally abuse me because my husband has posted my address, my personal and work email, phone numbers, workplace address, and every other bit of information online. It is as if the eyes and judgment of the entire world is on me. Yes, the great majority of people are sympathetic, kind, and support me. Many people have reached out in support of me, from old classmates to former colleagues, neighbors, family members, and religious people of the community. Family friends, his family, and many, many more have expressed solidarity and kindness. But the crazies and perverts who believe him and are like him are bolder, louder, and much more noticeable. Then I found out from my lawyers and their investigators that he was drugging me and assaulting me when I slept. I suffer from migraines and insomnia and take medication for it. He saw my medication as an opportunity to drug me with my own prescriptions. He shared, was actually bragging, on a forum where other perverts congregate, how he was so clever for drugging me with my own medication and that they were encouraging him to do more things to me. Soon-to-be ex-husband has also decided to spread rumors that I was aware of the cameras and pressured him into posting online, and there are people who actually believe him. He also changed his mind about not pressing charges. I went to court. The judge and prosecutors were sympathetic and dismissed the case. It was a combination of my lawyers explaining the circumstances that led to me slapping him and his subsequent actions, threatening me, attacking me, doxing me, and blackmailing me by saying that he didn't care about the slap and that he would drop everything if I forgave him. My lawyers used his own words against him and since he wrote it in text and on a recorded call, he admitted to me not having slapped him that hard and that he only pressed charges to cause me harm. But his crimes against me are still being investigated by the prosecutors. I'm an asshole for refusing to babysit my roommate's child. I'm 41 and I've been living with my roommates who are a married couple for several years now and they have a daughter. I work full-time, night shift job, and the wife works a couple nights at a restaurant and the husband is an online content creator. A few months ago, I was asked by the husband to watch their child for a couple hours while he ran errands. And I agreed to since I had just gotten off work and it was around 9 a.m. at this time and I figured I could just sleep afterwards. Well, a couple hours turned into eight hours as the husband used his time to get his lunch, run a few extra errands, and get some stuff and I was already very angry at this point. And when the wife came home, I told her what was going on. The husband came home with a proper payment for watching his child a $6 pizza from Little Caesars. And a couple weeks ago, I was asked again by the husband if I could watch their child, and I flat out refused, reminding him of what happened last time. He got angry, calling me selfish, and that his errands are going to now take longer. I told him, it's not my child, and I'm not going to watch someone else's child for almost nothing. And he stormed out with his kids, saying if I need something from him, I better rethink about asking. So I'm just wondering, was I being the a-hole here? I'm an asshole for refusing to babysit my roommate's child. I'm 41 and I've been living with my roommates who are a married couple for several years now and they have a daughter. I work full-time, night shift job, and the wife works a couple nights at a restaurant and the husband is an online content creator. A few months ago, I was asked by the husband to watch their child for a couple hours while he ran errands. And I agreed to since I had just gotten off work and it was around 9 a.m. at this time and I figured I could just sleep afterwards. Well, a couple hours turned into eight hours as the husband used his time to get his lunch, run a few extra errands, and get some stuff and I was already very angry at this point. And when the wife came home, I told her what was going on. The husband came home with a proper payment for watching his child a $6 pizza from Little Caesars. And a couple of weeks ago, I was asked again by the husband if I could watch their child, and I flat out refused, reminding him of what happened last time. He got angry, calling me selfish, and that his errands are going to now take longer. I told him, it's not my child, and I'm not going to watch someone else's child for almost nothing. And he stormed out with his kids, saying if I need something from him, I better rethink about asking. So I'm just wondering, was I being the a-hole here?